Welcome to a happy Victory Monday edition of Gangs All Here, our New York Jets podcast from the New York Post. This episode of Gangs All Here is presented by Tri-State Cadillac Dealers. Be iconic. Visit your Cadillac showroom today. Those highlights you heard, courtesy of Fox. You heard a little clip there at the end as well. In a Jets dominant 31-10 victory, it's Jake Brown here alongside Jets beat writer for the Post. Brian Costello and Kaz, I'll tell you this. I knew it was going to be a good day with the Jets win Sunday because before the game, I met the infamous Johnny ice cream, serve him up that large vanilla cone, rainbow sprinkled. I've slowly become lactose intolerant. So Johnny's going to have to be the ice cream guy for us here. But what Johnny, me and the rest of the Jets fans witnessed at a rainy MetLife stadium was a dominant Jets win the most dominant of the year and caused the once inactive Jets third string QB, Mike White. Stepped in for Zach Wilson and reminded us why he's not Mike White. He's Mike Effin White. First start of the season. Looking like a 10-year vet. 315 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers, include, including two to him. The other Wilson. That's Garrett Wilson, who was him once again. But that title goes to Mike White on Sunday. Say what you want, and we'll talk about it. The Bears suck. The defense suck. Uh, this was the game the Jets were supposed to win by seven, the highest you know, favorite that they've been all season against a backup quarterback and Trevor Simeon, a three and eight Bears team. But to step in cause and throw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, not turn it over in the ugly conditions and the swamps of East Rutherford, Mike Wright White was making it rain. The offense was the white night because not only did the QB put on a show on Darrell Reeves day, the Jets backfield decided to join the party with bam, bam. That's right. Zonovan bam Knight stepped in there 14 times, 69 yards. Nicely done. And yeah, Elijah Moore scored a touchdown as well. Remember him? Jets defense dominated again, 31-10, 7-4 in the season. And Kaz, we said the Jets got to be in the graphic in December. They are 7-4, seven seed, six games to go. And this is Mike White's team. The guys rallied around him. They love this guy. Zach who? There's a new sheriff in town. He's the 171st pick, not the second. Take it away, Kaz. Well, I don't know where to begin, Jake. You, you didn't leave a whole lot of meat on the bone there. First of all, who's who? Johnny, who? Who did you meet? The ice, the kid, Johnny Ice Cream. You know the Jets post every time I they win. Johnny gets is. ice cream. What? Yeah, I oh, don't really my. pay attention to where the Jets post. So. Oh, yeah, goodness okay. gracious, he's I don't great. Know who that is okay. I'll, we'll I'll, sh- I'll send you a link after you see Johnny. Okay, I'm happy you met him though. That that sounds like a big day for you. Um, yeah, White White played well, Jake. Got to see it against a real team, though, right? That team, the Bears were a they are a JV team. I knew that they was coming. With, I knew you were. They had three. They were missing three starting defensive backs, right? Once Eddie Jackson went down, they had three. They had three backups uh, on the field, but you know he did what he had to do. He played well, um, and now the Vikings are the worst pass defense in the NFL. So he can do it again next week. They are the 32nd ranked pass defense in the NFL, 31st total defense. So while the Vikings have a good record, their defense stinks. So there's no reason to think White can't do it again. It's just then, and then we'll see in Buffalo. That's that'll be the real test for him and his offense. But I would have liked to have seen Zach Wilson against this team to see what he could do. I think you know he's he played against a lot of good defenses, and and that was part of his struggles. It would have been interesting to see him against this unit. Um, but you know. There's no denying the Jets offense look better today than they've looked all season. The question is whether it was white or whether it's the bears or whether it's a combination of both because the bears stink and they've traded away their two best defensive players in the last few weeks. Um, they, you know, they really couldn't do anything, but the, I thought, I think LaFleur calls the game differently when it's not Zach Wilson. He looks like he's, you know, that when you watch it, you're like, it just looks different. It looks like they're more aggressive. Uh, they, tr- they almost looks like they trust Mike White more than they trust Zach Wilson, and maybe they do. So, um, you know, it's it was a uh, great performance by him, and now now we'll see if he can build off of it. Well, I'll disagree with you the fact that I would not have wanted to see Zach Wilson out there. And, yes, he probably would have been fine, but you weren't going to see 22 for 28, 315 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, he was throw, slinging it all over. He was making the simple yes. throws. He had a couple of deep throws to Zach, uh, to Garrett. Excuse me, I'm mixing them up. But I want Mike White the rest of the year. I know this is a terrible Bears team, but he's earned it. And we'll see. You're right. Minnesota's a bad well, He hasn't team. earned the rest of the year yet. He's earned 
he's there in the next few games. You know, I certainly, you know, in my eyes, this was a three game experiment, right? It was today. It was Vikings. It's bills. And then reassess after that, he came out and, you know, he checked off one of those boxes pretty big today and we'll see if he can keep going. Now. I, I don't think you'll see Zach, um, you know, I thought the earliest to see him would be Detroit. I think he's probably pushed that back a little bit now. Maybe Jacksonville's the earliest to see him, but I don't think he's earned the rest of the season yet, Jake. And I, and also I think it depends on the team. Um, the team, it, you know, if the team falls out of the race, then it, it's a different story. If they stay in the playoff race, you, you got to ride the guy that's getting you there. It, it really is a statement though, to how different this offense with him. And, and just the fact that Elijah Moore got involved. I mean, he's alive. I mean, a touchdown yeah. catch, you know, well, I'll play a clip of audio that he did funny after the game talking about kissing the ball, but two for 64, the receivers were alive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys with a catch cause. We, yeah. we may never see that with Zach Wilson at quarterback ever. Um, I do want to see it on the road. I want to see it in Minnesota against a good team. I know they're bad passing defense, but that's a tough road game next week. And we'll see. But like you said, LaFleur seems to have a lot more trust in Mike White than he did Zach Wilson. We saw play calls that we really didn't see much of with Zach Wilson. And Bam Knight, how about that? How about Bam Bam stepping in there? Do you know the reason behind? Have you found out the reason behind the James Robinson healthy scratch? They felt Bam Knight was a better option. You know, they felt his running style was better. They have not been thrilled with what they've got out of the running game in the re in recent weeks and felt like, Bam Knight's more of an, you know, definitive downhill runner, one cut runner. And so they decided to tr try it and it worked. You know, he, he had a pretty he good game. He looks good. You were right about him. He is explosive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the guy you saw in training camp. Like he was in training camp. Like I want to say this the right way. It's not, he was, the, it wasn't the best player in training camp, but he was probably the guy, the most you were like, who is that? Because right. Like when Garrett Wilson did something or Sauce Gardner did something, you were like, oh, well, they are first round picks. You knew you expected it. It was like, I didn't know who Bam Knight was really, you know? And it was like, who the heck is that guy? He, he just, he just jumped uh, every day in training camp. He, you know, he was making plays. That's why I, I thought it was weird that they traded for James Robinson. I, I was like, I would have rolled with Ty Johnson, Michael Carter and Bam Knight as my three guys. And if they, if they stumbled, then I would have tried to pick someone up off a practice squad uh, along the way or off the street, I wouldn't have made a trade for him. That, that was my point at the time. Um, but yeah, he had a nice game. And, you know, I think he's, he's also Michael Carter sprained his ankle. looks like in the third quarter, we'll see if he's going to miss some time. Um, but, you know, next week could be Bam Knight, James Robinson and Ty Johnson as running backs. Do we know this? I guess we don't know the severity yet, but it, I guess you know, it's, he's going to be week to week, no matter if it's a high or well, low the, ankle. Well, if it's a high ankle sprain, he'll be out for, several weeks you know uh the high ankle sprain costs you weeks if it's if it was a regular sprain i'd say he's probably gonna be day to day this week and see if he can come back but the high ankle is the one that's the tough one to come back from another injury on the offense to try to battle through cause it's unbelievable first it was Brees hall you know after the offensive lineman uh and now it is michael carter and it's on option three four and five now option three well, uh, was Ty Johnson. Now he's option five, option three. Now I got to do some, some matrix and matrices. I had to withdraw from that at Hofstra because it was too hard for me. Um, but I, I think now your, your number five options, uh, Johnson, your three option could be bam. And your four option could be James Robinson. We'll see how they, yeah. how they structure it. But those are your three running backs going forward. And the jets again, next man up mentality. He does not go down. Like I know it's a bad bears defense, but he was carrying defenders on his back. Bam Knight yeah. in his debut. That was quite impressive. W did you – was that surprised you, right, the Robinson scratch? Because that yeah, seemed to yeah. come out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. Yeah, no, I didn't I didn't know that was going to happen. So that was surprising. Yeah, but I, I thought it was a good move. And, like, look, Robert Sala last Monday when he opened the door to benching the quarterback, I remember he said everything. We're looking at everything. Like, we're mm – -hmm. and I believe him. Like, he was – they sat down and just looked at the offense of what can we do? And, you know, all the focus was on the quarterback last week, but they couldn't run the ball in New England. And that was a big problem. And so get, you know, to, I thought it was, they didn't run the ball great in the first half against the bears. It sort of the passing game opened up things for the running game. I thought, because then the bears started playing cover two in the second half and that opened things up for the jets to run the ball. And they really, 
they really pounded the ball in the fourth quarter and, and uh, got the running game going. So we'll see in Minnesota if they can do something a little bit earlier with the run game. And it was nasty out there. It was raining pretty much the whole game. Yeah, it was. Usually I like to go sit in the stand. I was happy to be in the pre- warm, nice, uh, warm, press dry box. press box. Yeah, yeah it's some uh, halftime rigatoni uh, with oh, some mozzarella yeah. sticks. Not te- not a terrible uh, halftime option. Uh, and let's talk about Mike White here. I want to play uh, Josh, the audio of him, because the entire game after the game, uh, the train, which is an absolute mess, like uh, it is, I hate commuting there and back it is a disaster uh the train even back people were chanting mike white on a packed train um not sure when it was coming you know which direction the train was going people were just chanting mike white's name and he talked about after the game josh let's play what he had to say about those chants it's it's always cool i'm not going to sit here and, and give you some quarterback cliche that i don't i'm not focusing on that which there are times i'm not but Towards the end of the game, I, I, I think it would be a lot cooler if they didn't do it while we were trying to snap the ball. But um, no, I'm not going to complain too much about that. For for the fans that were there, you know, a lot of people, there were a lot of empty seats. And then I felt bad. The Revis Ring of Honor ceremony, there were about seven people in their seats. Like it was, yeah. he, he was drawn to tears. I mean, before he started his speech, but there was no one out there, but you can't blame him. It was nasty out there. But interesting stuff from Mike Martz which I it might be a little soon to say this because he's had a couple yeah, of great games. To say he this. said this feels like the Kurt Warner story. Yeah, Your thoughts? Ridiculous. ridiculous to say that right now. Ridiculous. Like, come on. Let's let's That's give good. it a let's give it a little bit. Like he also he did have a game against Buffalo last year. He threw four interceptions, right? So like mm-hmm. he you know, let's let's slow let's, let's slow down a little bit. I, I love how the team just rallies around him and you just see the morale is so much better with him there. And, you know, I don't know if guys hate Zach Wilson, but they surely like when Mike White throws the ball to them because he he makes the simple throws. It's not like he took big shots. The one kind of big shot he took was Zach Wilson, who put on the juke move of the century. Garrett Wilson. You oh, are my goodness. Best. I I, I, I got to get this guy's name off my mind. Yes. No more Zach. Cross yeah. it out. Garrett Wilson. Cos, that juke. I mean, we've seen that pretty a few good. times this year. Yeah. He is filthy. He is him. Yeah. He's a pretty good player. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. And. Look, he he went out on a limb last week with his post game comments, and he basically he called out not just players, he called out coaches and said they had to do things differently. And I think they did. Um, you know, I think they listened to him. So that's pretty big from a rookie. But yeah, that move was ridiculous, Jake. Um, he's he's a special player. Uh, so he he can get in two touchdowns today. He was rolling, and um, yeah, they. The thing that's impressive with White, because guys always say this, is take what the defense gives you. He does it. He doesn't force a lot of throws. There was one bad throw that Eddie Jackson should have intercepted, and he dropped. Outside of that throw, I can't think of any that were like, oh, he forced it. He's very good. And, like, you know, the Cincinnati game, remember, he had no long throws in that game. He just took the stuff underneath and kept killing them with these short throws. He's he's good at it. Um, he just seems to have a poise about him in the pocket. And, uh, you know, that that's what this offense really needs is, is just someone to kind of keep the chains moving and keep going and find the open guy. And that's what he did. And he's got enough mobility to get it done where he doesn't really use his legs and runs. I mean, he didn't have one run rushing attempt. Usually Zach has three or four games. He didn't have to run at all. If he had to throw it away, he did, and that barely happened. Only six incompletions. Yeah. And like you said, didn't force the well, issue at all. I, I want to. Yeah. Again, I'd like to see him against a real pass rush, too. Yep. Like, That's I what I was going to say. I want to see him against Minnesota <laughs> and see what he does. There's pass rush. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. I, I actually tweeted, they have no pass rush, and then they got it with their one sack after I tweeted that. So I'm sure people are cursing me out. But that was, you know, they had no pass rush at all. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see him. I'd also like to see him, Jake, against a team that's blitzing and trying to heat him up and that kind of like, – Bears were very, very vanilla on defense. I'd like to see someone, you know, see him against the team that that shows a lot of different looks and see how he does against that. And they caught some luck. You know, Justin Fields not playing was huge for them because Trevor Simeon sucked. I mean, he he could not do anything. And the Jets, you know, they did it again. They get the luck of the backup quarterback. I'm, yep. I'm tallying up how many times. So it was Cleveland was one. So Brissett was one. So then Pittsburgh Steelers. was sort of a weird one because Pickett came in at halftime, right? So they didn't start with a backup, but came in. Then Miami, they had Teddy Bridgewater, knocked out the first play of the game. So they get the third string quarterback that game. Brett Rippon in Denver, 
four. And then this one. Five. Yeah. So five games of the backup. And how yeah. many of those have they won? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five and oh. Keep playing the backups. Can Kirk Cousin trip over a chain this week or something? And here's the thing. Like, look, it's it's a real thing. And I think Jets fans get annoyed when you point it out. But it's a real thing. Here's what I'll say, though, is the Jets – I said this to somebody in the offseason. At some point, this team had to have some luck as well as good play because there's been years of bad luck. And it, it hasn't all been crappy players and crappy coaching. There's been like crazy luck where teams will get their starting quarterback back the week they play the Jets. That's kind of what's been happening the last few years. They've been, they play their, they lose the week before they play the Jets and they get like all prepared to play the Jets and come in and beat them. The Jets have had to play. With Luke Falk at quarterback, the Jets have had to play with Trevor Simeon at quarterback. Um, you know, this so they, they are getting some luck here, but it is well earned through the years of bad luck. We've had 60 years of bad luck. No, so yeah, about we've had time. 60 years. We've had at least 48 years of bad uh, luck yeah, with no, this no. franchise. So it's a, you're right. It's about time we caught some breaks. They're in the graphic. In fact, they are the seventh seed at seven to four. Now they lose the tiebreaker to Cincinnati who pulled off a tight win. And we thought we were going to get a Chargers loss. They score, go for two. They get a win. So they are right behind the Jets there. Yeah. And then the Patriots lose. Now it's Patriots bills this week. So the Jets are going to get help no matter what. Um, I, it's a win-win. As long which as way do you tie. want them? To, which way do you want that to go? Dude? I'm kind of indifferent. I, I, I kind of want the Pats to lose, so I have to worry very little about them. This feels like an month. elimination game to that for them. Yeah, like I look at that. Like if they lose, they're pretty much done. And you lose, and you're gonna lose the tiebreaker of the Pats no matter what. The Bills, you have the tiebreaker right now. If, you know, if you sweep them. Then. Yeah, but then I look at it like, all right, going to Minnesota, Mike White wins. You're in first place if the Patriots win. So I am on the fence. Well, no, the Dol- you're thinking about the Dolphins, though. That's right. That's right, the Dolphins. But oh. Dolphins, they they you know, they know play the path. Have, have you looked at the Bengals' well. schedule, Jake? Uh, Bengals- I have. They Bengals' have a- schedule is ridiculous. They get the Chiefs next week, then the Browns with Deshaun Watson. Then they're at the Bucks, at the Patriots. They get the Bills and then the Ravens. They are the Bengals, though. They they could win all those. They could lose five out of six. So. Yeah, I mean that's a tough one. That's a tough schedule. Yeah. Um, so like you know, if you're you're starting to look at schedules, like they got a tough road uh, ahead of them. I haven't looked at the Chargers yet. You char- the Chargers ha- are at the Raiders. Then they play the Dolphins, the Titans, at the Colts, Rams, and at the Broncos. So Chargers have Chargers have a pretty pretty light schedule coming up that's why the jets really needed arizona to hold on there but of course the charges again a miraculous yeah. ending although who knows what happens when they play the raiders next week because the raiders suddenly are winning games they help yeah, out the giants by beating seattle it'd be a surprise if the Chargers lost more than three of those games right yeah. they get the, the raiders dolphins titans colts rams broncos they should they should go four and two they could drop one of them and go three and three yeah, it's gonna Jets don't have much room for error. Ten and seven, you think would get you in, but it could also lose out a tiebreaker. So three and three. That's what you gotta do this last month of the of the season, last six games. And I think they will do it. Uh Elijah Moore showed up Sunday. No one was happier to have a new quarterback than Elijah Moore. Josh, let's play what he had to say after the game. I believe it was our own Mark Canazaro's question. And uh <laughs> A hilarious answer about who he kissed Saturday night. Well, I, you know, I miss it. I was I was talking to it yesterday. I was talking to the ball, and I was just like, damn, like, you already know how I feel about you. And I was kissing her, and I was telling her it's going to be soon. It's going to happen soon. So, you know, it's just, you know, be patient. You know, it's going to come, man. The storm, you don't weather the storm. You become the storm, you know. So I'm, I'm just thankful, you know. I can't thank God enough, man. So the ball responded? Oh, yeah, she told me she loved me, and she wanted to get back to it. Yeah. What philosopher said that? You don't what, weather what, the storm. What, the storm. Yeah, I, I was standing two feet away from it. I was perplexed by that. I was I was going to ask him, can we go over this again? What, what was that? Yeah. That might be the new motto for the rest of the season. You don't weather the storm, you become the storm. The Jets are the storm. I don't. I still mm-hmm. don't even know what that means, mm-hmm. but I like it. And, you know, he showed yeah. up looking fly. He is a new man, and this is the thing. Like, He's always a different guy when Zach's not the quarterback. His stats are ridiculous without Zach. I mean, listen, yeah, it's, it's one a weird, game. it's a weird thing. We'll see. But whenever anyone else is quarterback, yeah. and this isn't just a Mike White against the Bears, because yeah. like you said, with Joe Flacco, who still is the Jets leading touchdown passer. Well, Mike, he's got, Mike, could Mike White's be that coming. Yeah. Five. So now we got Flacco more, right? at five. Zach has four. White has three. 
and two to tie. Barrios has one. <laughs> Barrios is, Barrios might tie Zach by the end of the year. <laughs> uh, listen, we'll see what he does in Minnesota. I don't want to see Zach in the season. Um, um, I don't think the book is sold on him, but. You know, if Mike White plays this well, it's not. It doesn't mean he's the franchise quarterback. He's not going to play this well every go, week, though, James. But he's it means not. you got to go out and sign someone. Well, I, I really, I'm very curious to see if he has a good game against Minnesota, and then you know the Buffalo, Buffalo game stuff because we know what he did last year against Buffalo. Yeah, well, and it's so. just Buffalo's defense is good. Like they've been, they've kind of been a little off the last few weeks, but they're a good defense. They'll probably be regrouped. And playing in Buffalo is brutal. So that that's the one that's going to be if he can play well there then it'd be, be uh, pretty impressive. So do you look at this Jets team going into December cause with a new quarterback? And again, against a bad team. Are you, I want the cause real answer right now. Will the Jets make the playoffs right now? Looking at it. Hmm. I think they will. Jay, I do. I think they will. I think, um, I think ten. I think ten wins does it. So I do. I, I'm looking. You know, Lions, Jaguars, and then one other game. That's pretty much how it is. Now I do think there's a game coming up, Jake. That the defense isn't going to show up, right? Like they have at the beginning of this game was like, whew, that the the defense did not play well at the beginning of this game, and they were able to snap out of it. It was against Trevor Simeon. They've played well all year long, right? They haven't really, you know, the beginning of the year, they had a few hiccups. They were getting to know each other, but they haven't had a game where they just got their doors blown off. Uh, I just think there's going to be a game where the Jets are going to have to win a shootout, and I'm curious to see that one. But uh, right right now, it's it's hard to see them not, not winning three of these games, um, and I think that'll be enough. I'm curious what you think the third. I guess it's too soon to say, but too soon, I think I, there's always there's a game you don't see coming, right? Yeah. Like I, you know, who I, any of those games would be an upset right now. I think. I think but, they got a shot versus Minnesota. Here I, think, with that I don't. Th- I don't think Minnesota is as good as the record indicates. Like if you look at Minnesota, they they've won a ton of close games. So, you know, yeah, I I don't think this is an impossible game for them this week. Uh, I think I think winning at Buffalo is tough. Um, who knows what that. Miami game will be right. Miami might have a playoff spot locked up. They might not need it. They, they might not play their guys. So that could be interesting too. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm looking at that last week against Miami as potentially being the one uh, we'll see what, and listen, Seattle, you just, you don't know with them. Like they just lost to the Raiders. Yeah. So you just never know what Geno Smith and that team, they could score a lot, but their defense has not been great. It's a long that's- trip, long trip for the jets. Like they, they traditionally have not played very well there. Yep. But yeah, yeah. this I mean, listen, this was part one of three. We said beat the Bears, beat the Lions, beat the Jaguars. Step one is done. You got two yeah. more, even if you lose to Minnesota and Buffalo. But this was this was fun. And and fans were excited leaving this game. You you felt the exuberation. You love the quarterback change. And now, you know, do your thing against Minnesota. And listen, these are two tough road games coming up. The Jets have been road warriors. Their only road loss came last week, but these are two, you know. Super Bowl contenders. I know the Vikings probably won't, but they are a Super Bowl contender and the Bills are a Super Bowl contender. So now Mike White gets two tests. So if they win next week, cause no excuses. I don't want to hear yeah. this is a bad Minnesota defense because they're nine and nine and two is nine and two. Yeah. Well, the off the, they have a real quarterback, right? I mean, Cousins is a legitimate quarterback. He's not Trevor Simeon. Justin Jefferson might be the best wide receiver in all football. And mm-hmm. I think that's going to be a fascinating matchup whether he's facing sauce, whether he's facing DJ Reed, that's going to be fun to watch, right? Jets secondary versus Justin Jefferson. Adam Thielen is good. Um, you know, Dalvin cook is good. They've got, they have a good offense. So that's the difference is even though their defense isn't great, the offense is pretty good. So yeah, it, that's going to be interesting. Well, I have a question for you, Jake. Uh-oh. Do you think the jets are going to wear green jerseys at all this year? Like, this is, this have they, not they have not worn green once. I never this season. pay attention to that. I don't know why so they wore white in the beginning, right? Because okay. it's hot out. So they wear white. They were wearing white and white at home. Then they beat the Steelers with the white jerseys and black pants. So know. then that became a thing. They wore them every week and they wore that whole winning streak. They wore white and black. Then they wore the black full blacks against the Patriots at home. Lost that game. They went back to the white and black, beat the Bills lost the Patriots in it. And then today was the full black against the bears. Do you have this in your notes? You have like the Jersey. I got this in my head. When will they wear, when will they wear green jerseys, Jake? Cause I find this fascinating. 
that gangrene has not worn green jerseys all year. I'm more fascinated that you know that over not knowing Johnny Ice Cream. I mean, that that blows my mind that you don't know Johnny Ice Cream. They posted after every win of him eating ice I, cream. I, I you know, what? I really don't like I, Sunday nights. I really don't pay attention to uh, the Jets Twitter account that much. Oh, well, you they're know? doing a great job. I, I, I like. That's not, it's just I'm busy. I'm I'm writing. I'm recording podcasts. I'm doing. You know, it's a busy, busy <laughs> night for me. I really at once. Once that fourth quarter hits, Jake, I am not on Twitter very much because I'm writing uh, the, the whole, you know, I'm writing for the next five hours, basically. Well, they they had a good uh, I, Instagram post where the that coin flipping dude who's been right every week was finally wrong. Oh, he I was guess. wrong. Yeah, he had them losing this game. I saw that story. We had a story about that the other day. That was an interesting thing. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. glad he he lost. I don't know how. What, like that just seems like pure luck. I mean, people believe in that stuff, but the Jets were not losing to Trevor Simeon today. And boy, it felt good leaving that that stadium after a dominant win because I've seen some depressing games this year. Like every time I like the first game, uh, twenty four nine depression, twenty seven twelve depression, Patriots twenty two seventeen depression. The only good game I had was the Bills. Now I got another one, and we enter December in the hunt. And this is a big week ahead, big, you know, big week of preparation. You have a full week of prep, knowing who your quarterback is, no need to announce it. No, you know, and I will say this about Zach. I think he got someone in his ear because he sounded humbled when he spoke again. You could address that maybe, but you know, he's got to feel like the last kid picked in kickball right now. Cause you know, he's on the sideline looking like looking down, like, wow, like this team plays so well without me. And you don't really feel bad for him. He's got 35 million guaranteed and a four-year contract, but he's got to be feel, like, he probably feels good for the guys, but you know, deep down inside, he feels like crap. Do you agree? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how he feels. I, I thought he handled himself very well Wednesday when he spoke to us. Um, you know, and I don't necessarily think it's somebody in his ear. I think, I think he figured it out after last Sunday. And what well, his said. dad texted him after. He's like, "What are you doing?" Son? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he realized what he said when he said it. And I think, yeah, once he, once he saw it played back, he said he realized what he did. So I think, yeah, I do think this could be a good thing for Zach in the long run. I think it humbled him a little bit. He seemed a little humbled Wednesday. I don't know if that sticks, but he spoke to his teammates, apologized for what he said. I think all that stuff is a step in the right direction for Zach and maturing and, and figuring things out in terms of how to handle things off the field. Um, you know, how he f- couldn't have been fun today, Jake, watching it. Like, it just, you know, hearing them chant Mike White the whole game. like Whole game. The whole, whole game. game. I, I kept thinking, I'm like, he, man, that's got to be tough. And I, I looked at him a few times through the binoculars, sitting on the bench, you know, uh, that, that had to be rough. And, um, you know, but – I don't think he's done, Jake. I, I've been around too long to to like Mark Sanchez was done, and then Greg McElroy got a concussion, and Mark Sanchez had to start again. Ryan Fitzpatrick was done, and then Bryce Petty got hurt, and Fitzpatrick had to start again. So, I don't. I think I think we could see Jay, we could see Zach again this year, and maybe it's White gets hurt and he he ends up playing, oh, or say that. you know, or maybe they you know White stumbles and plays poorly, and they they put Zach back in. So I. I don't think you've, some people have said, oh, he's never going to play for the Jets again. I, I think we'll see him again. I beg to differ and I, I hope to differ. I, I don't don't wish upon. I mean, don't wish about it. I don't I don't I'm not hoping that Mike White gets hurt because I'd rather honestly I'd rather see Joe Flacco. If Mike White gets hurt, I'd rather see Joe Flacco than Zach Wilson. I just think they need a break from him. And you're just seeing the positivity around the team with him out. It's not just the results, but like guys just are loving it like. They're calling Mike White the king of New York now. I mean, it's only one game, but the guy's getting the keys to the city. And I think just the story, fifth-round pick, 27-year-old, just a guy who was a third stringer and inactive, now yeah, stepping yeah, in. And he played a great game, though, Jake. He, if, if he goes out and throws five interceptions, he's no longer the king of New York. Trust I know. me. Well, don't things, wish for things that change, Things change quickly around here, if you haven't noticed in the last – what we've done the last four weeks around here with, like – they're great. They suck. They're great. They suck. Uh, you know, so it's, it goes, it's, things change quickly. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, he is very popular in the locker room. Um, I do think guys like him a lot, but you know, if he, if he starts throwing interceptions, they might not like him as much anymore. 
this is like that new Disney roller coaster that they pitch where like it goes off the rails and like did you see there was a proposal for this new roller coaster I did where not. It, like legit goes off and goes like another so I mean it sounds like the dumbest and most dangerous thing ever but that's basically what this season has been week in and week out like my blood pressure must be really bad like I'm gonna have to see a doctor after this season ends but you know, I hope that game in Miami does matter because I can use a trip to South Beach, and I think I'm gonna <laughs> go down there. It's just my my family, like, what are they doing? They schedule my brother's engagement party like January. 8th. I'm like, it's week 18. I mean, obviously they don't pay attention to that, but they want me now. I'm in a tough predicament if that game matters. They want me to come down to South Carolina where I was for Thanksgiving to go to. I feel bad. It's my brother, but like. So what is it? It says engagement party. Engagement party. Yeah, I don't you think that's it. A... You can blow that off. That's I can. Not, that's not a real thing. Yeah, yeah you can blow that off. Gee, I will tell you. We- if it was the wedding, you gotta go. Well, like, of course, yeah. Well, right. well, they and here's the other predicament I'm in. The wedding is October 21st, which is going to be right in the midst of the Mets playoffs. We might race. be. We might. I my nephew's getting married next October. I can't remember the exact date. He's got. He's getting married on a Sunday next October, Jake. So, it might be a full. Like substitute gangs all here next next October for one of those games. Who is uh who's getting married? My nephew. Your nephew. Okay. So yeah. wow, you might miss your first game since like the Bush presidency. No, no. I, I well, I missed the Obama game. presidency. I missed the games during COVID twenty twenty. Well, that doesn't count. Have you missed a game other than COVID? Yeah. Uh, not since I took over the beat in two thousand eleven. Wow, you've yeah. done a decade. Not counting COVID year, a yeah, COVID decade. Year. No miss Sundays. No miss Sundays. Wow, that's I, had, I had a good streak. Dude. COVID, I had like I think it was, I was up to like 140 something, and then the I went to the first two road games in COVID, and then I it was not worth the risk or the money of traveling, so I didn't go to the Dolphins game that year. Yeah, well, that year doesn't count. So wow, that's impressive. That's like I mean, that's me with podcast. I haven't missed an amazing but true. I don't think I missed the gangs all year. Yeah. But that you're next year is, we're in jeopardy. We're in jeopardy, Jake. Yeah, I'll I'll do it from the dance floor. Whatever, I'll do it. You know, the wedding will be a Saturday. I can still do Sunday. But the 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 Jets Dolphins game, and I don't. I think I could blow it off too. But I know my family was going to be devastated if I go to Miami to watch Jets Dolphins over my brother's engagement. But you, you, you know, do they know you? You could, you could have done it like a week. Well, a week later would be playoffs, so that would probably be worse. That'd I'd be rather worse. be at a playoff game. Well, if the season ended today, as we draw it up, it would be what Jets, Miami Dolphins, again. right? Yeah, in Miami, back again. to back. It's like the uh Bengals when the uh they play the Bengals back to back. You could stay in South Beach. I would not hate that. Let me uh right? hit up my uh my Florida connect and see if someone's got an extra bed or a couch for me for the week. God, that would be great. I could use a week in the sun. Uh, bring the equipment, bring the ring light back to back weeks in Miami. Wow. Now I'm, I'm like drooling at that thought because I went down to Charlotte. People are like, Oh, you get a nice warm vacation. It's 30 degrees at night there. It's not warm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Charlotte's a, a myth. Yeah. yeah pe- people don't understand, but back to back weeks, Miami in January, what is that? 65, 70 degrees. Anyways, we won't forecast January weather, but we will forecast that Mike White's going to be the quarterback the rest of the year. We'll preview Thursday's game against the Vikings. On Thursday or Sunday's game against the Vikings on Thursday's Gangs All Here podcast.